if I told you a Seahawks record holder and a player with true explosion were both on the team at the same time, but hardly ever played together and never found their true potential as a duo. That is the story that I'm going to tell today. Hi, I'm Joel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the top Seattle Seahawks running back duo that never was. This duo consisted of running backs Thomas Rawls and CJ Procise. And in order to tell this story, we have to go back to 2015 when it all began. In 2015, Thomas Rawls was signed by the Seahawks as an undrafted free agent out of Central Michigan. Prior to playing at Central Michigan, Rawls had transferred from Michigan where he only had three carries in his previous years. Rawls exploded in 2014 with 1,103 rushing yards and 10 touchdowns, despite only playing in seven of the team's 13 games. Rawls was considered a late round draft pick, but ultimately went undrafted. Rawls started training camp as the fifth running back on the depth chart, behind Marshawn Lynch, Robert Turbin, Christian Michael, and Fred Jackson. Prior to week one of the regular season, the Seahawks released Robert Turbin, traded Christian Michael to the Dallas Cowboys, and Marshawn Lynch experienced a hamstring injury, which in turn paved the way for Rawls to start in week three. And then this happened. Again, going the rest of the way without Marshawn Lynch. Aggravating the hamstring and breaking it is Rawls, and the rookie lowers his head. And is tackled at the 36. Gain of 21. There's a second and six carry. And a good burst ahead as Rawls slips out of an ankle tackle. And he's up to the 32 yard line. You're in a tough situation. You need the football at least three times a two point conversion. So, no decision for John Fox. That's Rawls. Look at Rawls recklessly running out to the 37. To the 11. Got Rawls in the tailback. He gets it. Cuts it back. And a good run by Rawls out across midfield. Inside the 35. It's still going for the touchdown. Kenneth Acker and Tremaine brought back on the corners. And Wilson flips it to Thomas Rawls, who fights hard to get a first down to the 30. But he has so many of the same characteristics of Marshawn Lynch. And talking to some guys on the field before this game, they said he loves to do this. Attack defenders, put his head down, his shoulder down, runs right through Tremaine Brock, and picks up some extra yardage. Rolls through the crowd, and touchdown Seahawks. Rolls has shown up to play today out of the backfield, whether he's handing the ball off, he's running physical, he's running with purpose. Mean intentions when the ball's in his hands, and the San Francisco 49ers are paying for not wanting to put their face on this kid. He's off to a great start again. Let's see how he does the rest of the year. Narrows rolls over 200 rushing yards today. What a performance from Thomas Rawls, and the Seahawks set him up replacing the injured Marshawn Lynch today. So you have to be able to find guys, and Thomas Rawls is a, a perfect example of. <laughs> John Snyder and his crew, the guys that make the decisions, finding a diamond in the rough, so to speak. Rawls went down with a season-ending injury in week 13, but he showed promise throughout the season and it seemed like everything was looking up for him. On the season, he finished with 830 yards, averaging right around 5.7 yards a carry, and he also added four touchdowns. Rawls at one point was on pace to become the third undrafted running back ever to have over a thousand yards in his rookie season and was even drawing comparisons to Marshawn Lynch. When we look at Rawls' totals from the six big games that he had in 2015, we see that he had 103 carries, 712 yards, which is just under seven yards a carry. And he also added four TDs in those games, which we all know is Pro Bowl caliber. And now we get to the second individual in this story. And for that, we're going to go ahead and fast forward to the draft of 2016. With the 90th pick of the 2016 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks pick CJ Procease. Running back, Notre Dame. 
All right, ProSize out of Notre Dame. Another Golden Domer off the board in the third round here, Bucky. Notre Dame has a lot of players coming out. CJ ProSize is one of the more intriguing prospects in this draft class. The reason he's intriguing to me, former wide receiver turned running back. They've never really had this in Seattle, a guy that could be a dynamic threat out the backfield. C.J. Prosex is the first one. Curious to see how this offense transformed with him in the backfield. Yeah, and Fabs, from a fantasy standpoint, Marshawn Lynch, the first-round pick, goes down. Thomas Rawls carries a lot of fantasy folks for a good chunk of the season. Now it'll be interesting to watch how this battle with he and Prosex plays out. After watching Thomas Rawls in 2015, you couldn't help but wonder how he would do paired up with C.J. Prosex, Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett, Jimmy Graham, and their newly drafted offensive linemen of Mark Lukinski and Terry Poole. How's Thomas Rawls doing? What have you seen from him in the past few days? Yeah, he continued to have a great week. There's no question that he's going to be able to play in the game. But you don't want to no, no carries in this game? You're going to have to wait and find out. In week two, Rawls suffered a fractured fibula and was out until week 11 of the 2016 season. Through week six of the 2016 season, Procyus had two carries for negative two yards and three receptions for 30 yards. Then in week seven against New Orleans, the Seahawks caught a glimpse of what the scouts had seen prior to drafting him. By the way, guys, Russell Wilson, this is a lateral. Tanner McAvoy with a pass coming back. Procyus inside the five. Then in weeks nine and 10, got what seemed like the ultimate breakout. To the left side, and Wilson goes that way underneath, and they're going to get the first down as Procise. And Wilson going deep, and the catch is made at the five-yard line, Procise. By Russell Wilson to realize that was man coverage. He's only worried about one thing, his football team today. Second and two. Wiggle, and he takes off down the sideline. It's a chase. The cloud will not get there. No flag. 72 yards. They were so excited to get him back in action. We saw it last week. How about that speed, Jim Nance? Don't think about throwing his name out there as you do the other guys. Here's the first running play for Rawls. He's been waiting for that since week two. He picks up nine. He still does occasionally. There's the first down. Carry. Look at Rawls make the cut to the outside. He saw an opening. I think he brings some energy to this offense. That's 18. With both of these guys healthy at the same time, they must have had a great deal of production, right? No. In week 11, 2016, Procise and Rawls combined for 169 total yards with this being the highest total they would ever have. In week nine of 2017, Rawls and Procise would have the highest combined total they would ever have again at a whopping 42 yards rushing and receiving. After that, Procise was out for the remainder of the season with Rawls being healthy for the playoffs. Remember those records I brought up earlier in the video? Let's get to those. Rawls' 2016 campaign was less than spectacular, with only one game over 100 yards, and only one other one where he rushed for an average of five yards a carry or better. But, in the 2016 playoffs, something happened. This one from the 13-yard line, second drive for Seattle, huge hole through the middle. And from the 40-yard line, they begin this drive. The Seahawks do with a great run. Now from the 48-yard line, Double tight end set, and again, moving to the outside, goes Rawls, career high in passing yards. Second and six, another big hole, and Rawls, 10 from the 24-yard line. Rawls, and he's able to spring away again. What a night for this guy. Second and 10, to the ground again on third and one, and they're gonna run the ball, and Rawls again, burst through the line of scrimmage. There's Wilson down there to throw a block to help spring him. But, uh, <laughs> out of those 27 carries, man, um, each one was hard, you know, each one was hard. This ended up being Rawls' final moment in the spotlight, with his highest rushing total after this game being 36 yards in 2017. Rawls still holds the postseason rushing record for yards in a game of 161 by a Seahawk running back, as well as the 
Seahawk rookie yards per carry average of 5.7. So what did 2017 and beyond yield for these two guys? Not a whole lot. In 2017, the Seahawks offensive line ranked 27th out of 32, which unfortunately wouldn't allow for a whole lot of opportunity for anyone running the ball. And the leading rusher on the season was actually Russell Wilson. The Seahawks also missed the playoffs for the first time in seven seasons. When we go back to their player snapshots, we can see that each played in 35 games over the course of their career, with CJ Procise final appearance being in 2020 with 10 games, and Thomas Rawls being a single game back in 2018. As much as I love CJ Procise, as a Seahawks fan, there were so many moments I had where he might pop up for a glimpse in a game or you know, you'd see him. Specifically, I remember him actually running a touchdown in against the Cardinals. And I just remember thinking to myself, this guy is still on the team? How? When we examine the two players' production from a percentage standpoint, it's pretty crazy. We see that Thomas Rawls had six major games. And in those six major games, he actually had 48% of his career production. For CJ Procise, 32% or just under one third of his career production can actually be summarized in six plays from his rookie season. Yes, you heard me right. Six plays, not six games. With three of the biggest ones being the two receptions and the run you watched in the previous highlights. Now, if you've gotten this far and you're an NFL fan that follows any team, maybe your team, maybe another team regularly, you might be saying to yourself, there's plenty of roster bubble guys that are in this same type of situation. Most of their career could be summed up in a few carries, a few receptions. But at the end of the day, CJ Process is a guy who played five seasons and logged 35 games. So with their careers over, what are these two up to now? Well, CJ Procise has run football camps in Virginia. Unfortunately, didn't run one this past year, but we can only hope that that is due in part to COVID and that we will see it return in the future. I couldn't find anything on Thomas Rawls, but we can only hope that he's doing great things for football and above all, his community. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any requests for who you'd like to see next, go ahead and leave that in the comments along with some feedback on how I can provide better future content.